Hello folks, welcome back. So this is kind of going to be a, a triple feature show. Um, last Friday, I couldn't get into Smackdown Review. I was just too zonked. I just, and then the weekend went by way too quick as it normally does. But I'm going to get to that. But first of all, let's talk about my wrestling notes. Because this was from Impact Rebellion. Um, again, if you want to see what happened... Or at least kind of hear my, my take on what happened. You can go to my YouTube channel again. The Hobo and His Girlfriend. I'm the one the only hobo at the time. Well, my girlfriend left me. So ladies, this guy is still available. So with that being said, let's talk about some Impact Rebellion. Um, I was a 50-50 booker. Which probably isn't too bad considering I haven't seen Impact in a while because I've been working. But as always, all those people that were chatting it up with me, I have to give you your props. RJS. Holy shit. Little book, you know, sir. Jordan Grace, she's a champion. She also has back. Oh my God, Becky, look at her back. I like big butts, and I cannot lie. Sunny Bimbo, unfortunately, Sunny Bimbo, you don't get a video, but you, sir, have already maxed out your video allotments. And you, sir, are are actually the always underweight champion in the Daytona Beach Bomb Fight League. Again, all you other people, you have to catch up for that. Uh, see here. Daryl Miller Jr. I cannot show the whole video. That's just a pure copyright zonk. And then they, they put me on a forklift with a luchador. CP541, you sir have during that show experience some Mundo Madness. Great Nate, you sir, 
know that Natalia is superior. Anthony. Wow, some days I can't read my own handwriting. Anthony M. Again, if, if you can decipher my handwriting. Again, probably a couple too many brandies into the show. I'll take a good guess. Anthony Martinman. Oh my God. And last of all, but not least, Silva Surfer. You know, you're asking about women, but you are the only one true tag team partner of Nikki Cross. So with all that being said, you know what, because I did take up, well this probably will take up a good couple chunks of minutes, and it never hurts to throw a little And now let's get back to some pro wrestling action. Again, if you want to watch my review that I did on Impact Rebellion, it's up on the YouTube. I highly guarantee you guys check it out. If you like it, give me a thumbs up. If not, give me a comment as to why you didn't like it. And then give it a thumbs down. If you're going to give it a thumbs down, though, at least leave me a reason why. Some things I can't change. I cannot play the whole show. That's very bad. I get zonked. The FBI knock on my door. They take my cat away. Drag me off in, in, in handcuffs, which is never a good thing. And then I move into a cell with a guy named Bubba. You do not want to be in a prison cell with Bubba. So with all that being said, let's talk about some SmackDown. And again, as always, I need to thank my YouTube audience, or at least those out on Discord, for interacting with me. Joel TJ, you, sir, have earned that six count.
the Reverend Wells. You, sir, are a master of the air guitar. Coding 135, you're just chilling out there with your briefcase boombox. Texas Senpai, sir, you wanted, you told Nikki Cross to take it all off. Cal 2, you can crawl out of here. <laughs> Uncle Leo, you sir. Just one by dirty pen. Jen Schultz. You, sir, know you're a kung fu fighting. Tracks 98. I'm sorry if I couldn't read that. You, sir, are a member of the El Generico band.
That being said, that's actually all my thank Wow. Is that really all my thank yous? I guess so. Wow. Oh no, I think there's only a few left. But that's okay. I shall save those for the next round of thank yous, especially from the raw audience. Um, so people in the next video, that's after the break, um, you'll get your thank yous probably either at the end of this week or probably next week, depending what video I feel like doing. Depending what I can catch on Friday and how I just, what general pissy mood I'm on Friday. Because I have to work two, work two jobs, a good 13 plus, actually almost 14 hours that day. Wow, that's a lot. But again, let's get to some SmackDown. So it starts off Cesaro. Uh, that son of a bitch. We'll recap there what happened between Cesaro and... And Seth Rollins, Seth comes out. Say Seth Rollins blames Florida weather. That's only because you're a corn-fed white boy from Iowa. You fear Florida man. Yes, Florida man doesn't care about weather. Florida man wrestles alligators in, during hurricanes in a, inside of a tornado. On top of a boat in the ocean. Yeah. That describes while drinking a beer. Yeah, so all that's true. My Florida man description. That's a good one. Uh, let's see here. So, yeah, so Seth Rollins, you can go back to your cornfields of Iowa and sit there with your straw hat and bib coveralls and watch wheat grow as far as I'm concerned then Jay Uso shows up and then hala 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 player well Daniel Bryan shows up too it's going to be a four it's going to be a tag it's going to be a mixed tag team match to open up the show and of course with that mixed tag team you have Daniel Bryan and Cesaro taking on Seth and Jay Uso, uh, Daniel Bryan gets hit with a buckle bomb. Poor, poor Daniel Bryan's gonna be out of here soon, I think. Probably after. I don't know if it's gonna be the WrestleMania backlash, or if it's gonna be after next week. Because remember, he is facing Roman Reigns, and loser leaves SmackDown. He he would be fine and raw. It'd be a little fresh start. Or he just says, you know what? He Or like people have been wanting them to do is go back to NXT and kind of retire that way. Who knows? It's kind of a homecoming for him that way. So so we do not know. Um, again, even Jay Uso can deliver a European uppercut too. Just not Cesaro. Cesaro has one of the best ones though. Cesaro gets a hot tag. Again, flurry of European uppercuts from him. Uh, Jay counters the swing. Cesaro does a pop up elbow. Daniel Bryan, again, the better suicide dive than his wife, definitely. I don't think Seth Rollins gets in the smash in the ma match at all. In fact, I think when Seth Rollins, the last thing I remember about Seth Rollins doing notably is that he left. That's not going to make Roman Reigns happy. We'll, we'll see what happens. Come. The back to the, the backlash of WrestleMania, as far as Seth goes, Seth had to go back and help his wife Becky Lynch. Still mad about that. Uh, and Daniel Bryan cuts a promo and Jay eats another swing. Uh, Daniel Bryan won with a knee plus. Again, this was a pretty good match for what it was going to be. Again, that the weird end, the the ending was Seth leaving. Still a solid cheeseburger match. Then boo Sonya Deville. Boo Sonya Deville segments. Boo. I will always boo Sonya Deville segments. Even if it's with Adam Pierce. Boo. Um, Apollo Cruz comes out and conducts a quick interview. Why do I have to defend... My intercontinent, my U.S. Wait, which belt does he have? He has... 
Wait, where's where, 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 where does he have? I, yeah, he has the IC belt. I think. Who is the US champion? No, because... Oh, yeah, Sheamus is a U.S. champion. That's... Duh. That's how notable that show was, I guess. Yeah, that was okay. And then it was Nia Jax versus Tamina. This had the potential to be a really good match. Um, Re uh, Re Reggie's back, which is good to see. Um, Nia's, Nia's just as strong as Tamina. Tamina's just as strong as Nia. That's pretty good. Nia's a little bit better talking, talking trash. Tamina was never much of a talk in the ring. Uh, Tamina did hit the Luthez press. Then there was the... Kind of semi-move that, that she did. Um, Nia got, got flung into the barricade. That was good. Again, the, the head into the barricade. Um, then Reginald was a distraction and I don't know it was just a really ugly roll up at the end not very pre looking Tamina wins because of the distraction I, I don't know this just seemed like a toss together match it, it was a ham sandwich Then we have Kevin Owens. He was doing an interview, then Big E shows up. He, of course, wants a shot at his title back. Does that really so? Kevin Owens is like, yeah, you can face me for it when, when I win. So, so we'll see what's going to happen. Uh, let's see here. Oh, yeah. Because the next match, and this is my question to my YouTube audience, who might know a little bit more. I, I, know, some, I know the big players in the indie scenes individually. I know Kevin Steen, that was Kevin Owens. Apollo Cruz was 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 the Uha Nation, and Pro Wrestling Gorilla. This is my question to you out there. Did Kevin Steen ever take on the Uha Nation? I don't know. That's why I'm asking you guys. Because the next match was Kevin Owens versus Apollo Cruz. Uh, Kevin Owens. Classic wrestling again, the single leg takedown into the ankle lock again, very classic stuff, and then into the headlock. Uh, Kevin Owens again, the drop kicks and chops are so good. Um, uh, once Cruz gets gets tossed outside, he starts making his comeback. Very classic that all heels seem to be doing now. KO hit the Swanton, the Swanton bomb. He has to be careful. Every so often it looks like he's going to miss that. And he can just ask Jeff, what happens to your whole neck and upper shoulder region? And how jacked up it gets after you miss so many swanton bombs. That can't be good. Then we have, oh, Sami Zayn comes out. Sami, he's just freaking annoying. Um, he, he has to sit ringside in a folding chair. He doesn't deserve a plush luxury chair. Like, well, he might be able to see part of the shoulder of mine. Like the rest of the announcers do have. He's very upset about that. And part of his conspiracy theories. And then, so Sami Zayn. Uh, Kevin Owens gets dropped off the top rope. Cruz, again, he has some great kicks though. And then it was like a DQ finish, because Aziz, and what I noticed, even though his name is Commander Aziz, he, he's not wearing the, the two gold bars. Captain, yeah, that would be the, I'm trying to think, I guess Commander would be two gold bars. I know Lieutenant's one, and then it goes by colors. So Commander, normally you would have bars on the collar of your shirt. Instead, on his shoulder he has his sergeant chevrons. No, 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 no. Sergeants are not commanders. Commanders are officers. Sergeants are NCOs, non-commissioned officers. Big difference. So yeah, I guess it's sergeant disease. 
<laughs> so, so he takes him out with the um, uh, Simone spike, the, th the thumb to the neck, the Nigerian spike, whatever it is now. Um, Kevin Owen gets dropped like a sack of potatoes, and Sami Zayn just dances over him. So technically, Kevin Owens won, but it was by DQ. But that's the finish, baby. Kevin Owens wins. This was actually a pretty decent match with the, and I and now now looking back, I can kind of understand the ending of it better. It was a solid cheeseburger match. Then we have Paul Heyman cutting his normal speech. Uh, Megan Merkin, I have no idea who she is. I don't know which which organization she came from. She interviews a Paul Cruz, but Biggie jumps him. Uh, I guess Sergeant Aziz was looking for his commander bars. Who knows? Uh, then the Rude Dogs, there was an interview there. Uh, Bailey interrupts. Uh, just get, just. Bailey interrupts that. And then, like, talks about Bianca, but then Bianca Belair shows up. I, I don't know. The whole Bailey thing is kind of funny. It's getting old, though. I think mainly because if you work with enough bitchy female customers, they're like, I see this at work. I don't want to see this here. I want to be entertained, not be reminded of what the workplace is like. So yeah, maybe it's just me. Uh, then we have the Mysterios taking on the Alpha Academy. That was This was actually fun. Otis and Gable, again, they, they look absolutely amazing. They have matching gear. It works. Uh, Otis, again, he's too strong for poor Dominic. Dominic takes the brunt of this match. And Chad's turn. He does a tiger suplex. That looked freaking vicious. Again, it looked really good, though. Uh, Otis just, like, tosses him over the ropes. He called. <laughs> Otis says, I'm the manimal. And that's an old football reference going back to the doomsday defense of the Dallas Cowboys with, um, I want to say it was Randy White, who was called the Manimal because he was part man, part animal. Therefore, the, the Manimal. So that, that was kind of funny. Uh, Chad has a series of, bell, uh, Chad Gable hits a series of belly to belly suplexes. Ray eventually gets his hot dog, hits the Lucha Destroyer, Frankensteiner. Uh, Ray and Dominic do a little uh, double teamwork. That was really good to see. Otis gets stuck outside the ring. Uh, Chad Gable eats the pin on this. I'll tell you what, it was a decent, decent cheeseburger match. So yeah, can't can't really complain. You know, I can never really complain that much about SmackDown. That was it. Wow, that was quicker than I thought it was. So the next thing we have uh, Cesaro and Daniel Bryan. Roman Reigns comes out, says, "I don't want to face you. You're a chump." To Cesaro, "I want to face you, and Daniel Bryan. If you lose, you have to leave my yard." So so Cesaro's like, "Yes, take it, Daniel Bryan." So again. Um, Claudio Casanevas versus Daniel Bryanson, or Brian Danielson, the American Dragon, would be a great match to see. Uh, I won't be disappointed with a Daniel Bryan match. I don't, I don't think I've ever been disappointed with a Daniel Bryan match, except for when it was Sh Shane involved. So Daniel Bryan says, Yes! 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 To the match. And that's how... Smackdown ends. Wow, that was that was quick. I'm actually shocked. That's weird. That's okay. You know what? It's time for then. It's time for another break. And so now let's talk about some Monday Night Raw. And I do have to apologize. To all the people that was chatting with me over there in Discord, um, I do not have enough thank you videos to go through everyone. 
So therefore, it won't be tomorrow because tomorrow is a live stream. Wednesday I'm up in Jacksonville. Thursday I work. Maybe Friday. Maybe for SmackDown's video. I'll have you guys on there. But trust me, you will get added on there. I think I had this issue two years ago when I did Triple Mania. Two or three. Uh, three years ago. Because they canceled Triple Mania for Corona reasons. But yeah, three years ago when I did Triple Mania, I think it took me... I think like four or five shows to really thank everyone. So, I'm at that point again. Thank you guys very much, though, and I do appreciate it. Uh, Raw starts off. We have Retribution in the ring. Um, they just start talking a little bit. Braun Strowman says, yeah, this is going to be a tag team match. It was supposed to be initially a tag team match with Braun Strowman and Drew McIntyre. And I like the fact that they have this whole theme going throughout this particular show. So that's pretty good. Um, Braun's like, phew. I'll do what you couldn't do, Drew. I'm going to take them both on myself. Because I'm the train. Woo, woo, woo. So it's Retribution versus Braun Strowman. And for the most part, Braun holds his own. I mean, even though uh, Mace and, and, and Dijakovic, uh, Dio and, 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 and Dijakovic, and um, yeah, Don, Donovan Dijak. I'm just going to call him that. It's so much easier. Don, Donovan and Dio are... Pretty big. I think someone did bring it up in the chest. Like, you know, just call him Dio. Like, have him switch his name. Saying we're done with this group. So we'll see what happens. Uh, Mace, again, he gets in. He has a big kick. Again, then they start to do quick tags in and out. Trying to stay fresh. Obviously taking it to the big man. It was a DQ, though. Because they kept on thumping a mud hole. On a Braun Throman. That's all a Braun Roman wins with the death the finish, baby. Yes. Uh, Drew comes out, makes a save. This match, uh, it was a ham sandwich. But you knew what it was going to set up. Holla, 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 player. We're going to have tag team match. Retribution versus Braun Strowman and Drew McIntyre. Drew's definitely the fresher person. He goes for the quick finish. So ends this, he wants to end this match on a tired uh, Donovan uh, Dijakovic. Donovan, yeah. Yeah, so Dijakovic or Dijakovic. I forget. Feast your eyes. That's all I remember. And he goes for the quick finish. Then there was a disrespect. Dude, Tia just slapped the living taste out of Drew. Oh, but Drew has that huge Scottish headbutt. Um, and it smacks so hard. And then, and then <laughs> this is great. Someone mentioned this, and this, I think, actually did happen. Drew smacked Donovan Dijak so hard, his kind of peel-on face paint fell off. Whoa. It's always cool when that happens. Um, see your mace again, the big slam onto Drew. Drew, he has the he comes back with the flying crow's line. Braun Strowman, whoa, whoa, whoa! It's time for a train, but no, they have some miscommunication there. Drew winds up hitting Braun. Braun's on the outside. Drew's on the outside. He didn't know what hit him. It was a count-out victory by Retribution. Indeed. It was a ham sandwich. Then we have Miz TV. Um, they start cutting a song. And I want to say it was almost the same tune as a White Stripe song. Because I'm like, wait a second. It sounded like, like half pirate song. But then I'm like, wait a second. I know that tune. It sounds like a White Stripes. Yes, nervous when she comes around, when she comes around, when she comes around. 
I get nervous when she comes around, when she comes around, when she comes around. I get nervous when she comes around, when she comes around, when she comes around. Hey, <laughs> great song too. I think it's the air beneath my fingers. I want to say, I forget. Do you have those white stripes or elephant? I forget now. I'll go look that up in my library eventually. Oh, well. Oh, I have to think about that, too. Then, let's see here. So, of course, this, this is going to lead to an impromptu meeting because then the New Day, Dame, Damien Priest, shows up. Um, they have a guitar case full of tomatoes. And they began to hurl tomatoes at them. No wonder the price of tomatoes are so high. Damn you, New Day. Damn you to hell. She took all the, the tomatoes. Now there's no single tomatoes lying around. Terrible. So, of course, this leads into the next match. It's Elias, uh, Miz, and Jackson Riker taking on the New Day. And Damien Priest. It's okay. Um, Xavier Woods starts to get beat up a lot. Um, Woods is definitely more agile. He tries to get, get tagged in. And Miz eventually gets tagged in, tag in. But he allows Woods to get tagged out. Miz gets beat up by his efforts. Kofi the flying tomahawk chop. Classic wrestling move. I love it when they use old school wrestling moves. Like Chief J Sp Strongbow and Wahoo McDaniels. Again, very classic tomahawk shot move. Off the ropes. That was, actually, that was off the top ropes. That was really good. Uh, Riker and Priest get in. Oh, we have some big hosses fighting. And I wonder. I wonder because I know you have Punishment Martinez. He was in NXT. Then he switched his name to Damian Priest. I wonder, though, if he ever took part in a tag team where they faced um, the Forgotten Sons. Because Blake's gone. Cutter's, Cutler's gone. And Jackson Riker, for some reason, he's the only one left of those three. I don't know, because... I mean, uh, Blake and Murphy. Remember, from, the, from those two, Alexa Bliss actually got more fame. So, wow, Alexa Bliss lasted longer than, than Blake did, though. Indeed. Uh, let's see here. Or was I not? I, was, I went off in a rant and rage about stuff. Oh, yeah. Riker and Priest. I wonder if they ever did face each other in NXT. I don't know. Again, you out there in the YouTube audience, you let me know. Or you can find it probably somewhere in my archive videos of NXT. Those are becoming precious like gold. The ecstasy of gold. Yes. And let's see here. The priest again. He eventually takes out everyone. Kofi hits a frog, frog splash crossbody. That's really good to see. Mundo then, <laughs> when Kofi side up in, in the heel side, Mundo takes a tomato and smushes in the face. That that was a great moment. And uh, then the heels hit the banana split. Yeah, yeah. That's when you take one guy is on one side, one guy is on the other side, and you go whoop to their legs. Ouch. No man likes that. Uh, so, Kofi had a the banana split. Miz always misses the, the last yes kick. Uh, Priest, again, he's back in. Takes out everyone. Uh, Priest and flies over the top rope, takes out everyone. And then, it was like a roll-up victory. Like, don't they teach you anything in wrestling school how to avoid a roll-up victory? 
Overall, though, this match, it was a good cheeseburger match. And then boo! Boo! Vehemently boo! Sonya Deville for letting the supposedly indef un indefinitely suspended Charlotte Flair into the arena by going to the exit door and just letting her in like, like, like that's nothing. I guess the dental surgery went better than when was faster than planned. Who knows? Or are they saving that? Because no, nah, nothing really screwy happened during her match. But I'll get to that later. Boo, Sonya Deville. Boo, Sonya Deville. Boo. Boo. Sonya Deville lets in Charlotte Flair for the back door. Um, and then, of course, Charlotte tells Charlotte, yes, bring her a ring. Says, tell the ref you're sorry. Referee, I'm sorry. I forget what his name is. And then Charlotte says, but yeah, you missed that. You should apologize to me. Yeah, okay. Charlotte, I'm sorry. I didn't see her at the time. Makes sense. But I've had good explanation, though. So, yeah, then they go backstage, and Adam Pierce is like, what the hell are you doing? It's like, we're supposed to be partners in this. You just don't bring her back. I'll do what I want to do. I don't know. Whatever. Oh, I tried to find you earlier. I don't care about that garbage. Then Bobby Lashley shows up with MVP. That's great. We'll interview session there. Uh, Rhea Ripley gets her interviewing and a little bit more about Bobby Lashley. Then Matt Riddell and Randy Orton talk it out and they're going to form a new tag team. RK Bro. We'll see how long this really lasts. Because you know it's, it's Randy Orton. Then let's see here. Um, back, further stuff backstage. Now I get some flowers from Angel Garza. Angel Garza, you're, you're, you're batting out of your league, I think, there, buddy. Just leave, just leave her to, to, to Reggie. Then you have Braun and MVP. MVP confronts Braun. Braun's like, yeah, well, I'm going to get in, and then both and all three of you are going to get these hands. And puts his little workout strap on MVP's shoulder. Then we get um, the RK bro, Orton and Riddle, taking on... Shelton, Shelton, uh, Shelton Benjamin and Cedric Alexander. I don't know what Shelton and or Cedric did to upset the people backstage, but man, they're getting buried. Twice eight losses from the Viking Raiders. Viking Raiders weren't, weren't there today. Now that to face this, this duo. Uh, Riddle, he gets beat up a lot. <laughs> he, has, he, he has one of the great faces. Again, got a he got started with a pair of gunt run suplexes, went for a bro mission, but no, Cedric Alexander gets out of that. Shelton Benjamin goes right after the knees. Vicious, too. Uh, knee breaker. Uh, basement drop kick. Well, so just a straight kick to the knee. That was good, though. Again, the way it should be. The, I guess single leg Boston Crab really working over the, over the one thing. Um, eventually, one body part. Eventually, Randy Orton does get the hot tag in. Cedric Alexander, he went up to the top trying to save Shelton. No, eat a catch RKO. Shelton was got tossed outside he, as he's making way, his way back in. He gets caught into the draping DDT of one Randall Keith Orton. And then, of course... Matt Riddell's like, bro, tag me in. So after a while, he gives up hope. And then Randy Orton just like slaps him. Says, you're in. Gives him the draping DDT. Uh, Matt Riddell goes up for the floating bro. Picks up the win. And then you're just kind of waiting. When? When is the Viper going to strike? You know he will strike. You just don't know when. This match was pretty good. It was a cheeseburger match. Again, Randy Orton is one of those few wrestlers that I don't think could have a bad match. 
Or at least, well, yeah, his match against Triple H was pretty good. It was, um, what was a stinker? Brock versus Randy Orton was pretty cool, too. I think, I think it was Roman, I think, versus Triple H. It was slow and slug-like. Although maybe the one at um, Saudi Arabia was probably the Randy Randy Orton wrestled special. I I forget. I'd have I'd have to go look at my videos. Yeah, and check out all my previous re wrestling videos as well. So next we have Oscar, uh, Lana, and Naomi taking on Nia Jax, Shayna Baszler, and Rhea Ripley. Rhea Ripley turned heel very quickly and kind of unannounced. I don't know about those booking people now that they got rid of um. Adam Corona. I probably said his name wrong. Probably. Uh, starts off very classic Matt wrestling stuff. Oscar's so good. Rhea Ripley's so good. Oscar uh, and, and and Shane and Baszler kind of an, an all star match. Whenever they felt like it, they don't even need the other eight ladies. Oscar and Shane and Baszler could go all night long. Uh, Rhea Ripley. Again, she tags herself in eventually. After Asuka said uh, was was mocking her, you know, holding out Shannon Baszler's hands. Eventually, yeah, Rhea Ripley tags herself in, and she is. And then, <laughs> then uh, Lana and Naomi tell double team on her. And I'll tell you what, Lana and Naomi as a as a ta as a women's tag team, they're growing on me. They're really good. They have coordinating ring gear. They're smooth. With their, their, for the most part, they've been very smooth with their double team moves. Their double team moves have made sense too. The way for the style that, that they wrestle, and what I mean by that is that they're not necessarily a high flying, but they're but it's a lot of jumpy, flippy stuff inside the ring, which does match their styles pretty good. But then Rhea Ripley hits that Australian headbutt. I'm gonna have to redo the severity of headbutts here. Uh, Baser eventually, and then for some reason Dana Brooke and Mandy Rose showed up. They dumped a bucket of water on Shayna Baszler, and Nia Jax went over and, and slipped on the water. No, that's it's old. I don't think they went this long with Titus O'Neil's slip underneath the ring. That was funny. And I think they did it, I think he, he kind of like walked down very gingerly, uh, Dana Brooke kind of kind of was there to steady him. He got to the end. He's like, "It's all good," and that was really it. Again, they they replayed that so often though. <laughs> I don't think that could ever happen again, honestly. But the the fact that they're forcing this with their women's tag team champions just isn't good. Uh, let's see here. So, man, so again, they provide the distraction. Lana, that side rush and leg sweep, that was really good. Naya, the high elbow with a Simone drop. Naomi, the flying crossbody. However, uh, Rhea Ripley gets a hold of Lana, hits the riptide on her, uh, tags in Nia Jax. Nia Jax hits the big Samoan leg drop. The heels win. Nia, Nia Shayna, and Rhea Ripley win. It was okay. That whole distraction is just... It's old. A ham sandwich. Then we have Alexa Bliss's playground. And and she went from like creepy hot to like freak. Very quickly because she has like... She has the contacts, the super pale blue contacts. Her eyes are all raccooned out. And like she did like the old jump scare thing, which which reminds me, I do have to take a picture of my honeysuckle bush and, and show it to to my lady friends, because women like flowery stuff. That's the other thing, Silva Surfer, flowers. Women like flowers. But we had Charlotte Flair versus Mandy Rose because Sonya said, "Why did you do that, Mandy Rose? You're a mean, cruel person. You're gonna go face Charlotte Flair." And Mandy Rose's tits were all smushed up into her outfit so that nothing pops out again. And they changed her outfits. 
Yeah, those outfits they had for WrestleMania were, were borderline everything seeing Dana Brooks' ass tattoo. Yes. Um, eventually starts out a kind of classic start by the two of them. Uh, Mandy Rose and goes to the top row to do drop kick. Charlotte Flair gets annoyed. She thinks the referee's coming too slow. She almost got run. She almost got uh, whipped into the post where the referee was. The referee cowered. She's like, "No, stop!" Yeah, he took an extra second to, to kind of gather himself, make the pin. Kind of consistent count. I actually thought he gave Manny Rose a quicker count, then realized, "No, I have to. I have to call this right down the middle." Uh, uh, Charlotte Flair then hit the natural selection on Mandy Rose. It was a quick match. It was a series of pinfalls during it. It's a ham sandwich. Then Drew McIntyre got a promo, a uh, little interview. Then we have Drew McIntyre in the main event. We have Drew McIntyre versus Braun Strowman. Choo, choo. Uh, this was okay. And uh, uh, Drew, he started to work over the knees. He hit the basement dropkick on Drew after he realized he can't go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Drew standing. Big mistake. But he learned, though. So at least he shows a little evolution, a little thought process with the whole whole idea of being a professional wrestler. Hey, going toe to toe with the big guy's not not. I'm I'm going to get the worst of it. I have to take him down. Uh, basement drop kick did that again. Then he drops. Then he drops elbows. It's like yeah, I just can't use my fist. My whole body weight and the point of the elbow meant for tearing and ripping open flesh. Just ask Randy Orton about that. Uh, so that was pretty good. Uh, Drew got then launched by Braun Strowman. And then again, it's whoa, whoa, whoa. Time outside. Um, Bobby Lashley then shows up with MVP. They kind of take a seat ringside. Drew somehow hit that great neck break. He had the, sl he had the sleeper hold. And I remember when the sleeper hold was the... Most devastating hold in all of pro wrestling. It put people out. I mean, look at all the people that use it where it was a finisher. Now it's like another rest hold. Boo. Or, or at least in New Japan, they use it as a setup, which makes sense. The guy's going to lose, lose oxygen. He's going to lose the flow of oxygen because you're, you're compressing the, the carotid artery, which, which is a little, yeah, bad. But... At least if you drop to a knee, you say, ah. Oh. And then you get punted that way. So that makes sense. Or, or some other big kick or, or knee to the back of the head. I think Suzuki used that. Uh, Shibata, I think, did that as well. They used the sleeper to set up, set up the punt. Makes sense, though. It's a setup to a finisher. I can see that. Either that or it has to be a finisher. One of the two. It just can't be a wrestled. Then that neckbreaker was actually pretty good. Braun Strowman got caught. He caught the Claymore. Drew got power bombed. Uh, Scottish headbutt to kind of get him on that thing. And then, eh, a really mess spinebuster. Listen, it's a bad idea to try and do a spinebuster on someone who's significantly bigger than you. Unless you're unless they're really good at taking it. It's not going to happen. It was a superplex, and I'm like, oh, wow, is Braun going to win? Then we had a bunch of interference by Bobby Lashley. And, and MVP. And eventually, Braun Strowman does get the win. So for um, WrestleMania Backlash, it's going to be a triple threat match. So it'll be interesting. I wonder, well, I mean, in theory, there's nine different. No, wait. Yeah, three times three. So that's. Nine different com combinations. No, it can't be. There can be six different combinations. So, six, he takes two of them. So again, the champion only has a third of a chance of winning anyway. That's real math, not Steiner math. So we'll see how it goes. This match overall, it was a, 
Oh no. He has so much of a match. And that was wrestling. So a little recap. Again, those people from Monday Night Raw, you are getting your own video clips. Do not worry about that. It's just a matter of time. Um, so I can kind of refresh things a little bit. Hopefully this video goes up sometime tomorrow. I probably won't have a chance to work on it. I might go on. I might work on it tomorrow night. Uh, we'll, we'll see how things go. If not, I can always work on it sometime this week. So this video will go up. Jeez, by Friday at the latest. So yeah, it's just one of those weeks again. But again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe, and I'll see everyone later. Bye. Wait, that's right. Tomorrow's Tuesday. I always forget what day it is. Bye.